Canadian registered vessel so we've had to remove it from the registry and then re-register uh, the boat again in our name so this is a process we're in the midst of right now. Uh, the name Windover uh, has a bit of a family connection in that it is my wife's mother's, my mother-in-law's maiden name and uh, so we want to keep that that name rolling and we really like it. it of course it's a, attached to our Windover water uh, obviously. So uh, anyway, I thought it'd be a good opportunity now to show how we can come up with the design for the stern of the boat, uh, how we name the boat, and uh, what sorts of names we consider, and what things you want to think about if you are naming a boat. Uh, first of all, there's several things you got to think about. Uh, uh, you want the name to be easily spoken over the radio three times. So a name like Rumpelstiltskin wouldn't work very well because you'd stumble over it. Uh, our last boat was called Topanga. Topanga is a great name. Topanga, Topanga, Topanga. You can say it three times very quickly. It also is a feminine name, which I prefer to have a feminine name simply because boats are considered to be feminine. It's always a she. And so there should be some sort of feminine attachment. In the case of Windover, it's my mother-in-law's maiden name, so I think that is the, the attachment. Um, also, you want the name to be something that can be said and not be offensive or not create confusion. So a name like Mayday. Mayday, Mayday, you got me! Get below! Well, that wouldn't be a great name for a boat. Or a name like Pan, 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 Pan. Not, not a great idea. So you want to think about things like that when you're naming your boat. So you want to be able to say it easily, you want it to have some kind of feminine connotation. And finally, I think you want it to be something that has a certain amount of strength to it. And I, uh, and I think that's just a personal thing. But I've always liked names that had a strong presence to them. Uh, now it is, the boats are feminine, but they're typically very strong as well. So you want to be able to communicate that. So Windover, I believe, does all those things. So that leaves us with the sort of the aesthetics of the name on the back of the boat. You see so many names that you can't read properly, that you uh, that look bad on the back of the boat, that don't aren't done tastefully. Uh, even up close, I know some names we saw. We had to really think about what they were saying because the the words weren't super clear. How we've done it is, uh, we've taken an image of the stern of the boat and cropped it. And then with that cropped image, we've colored it to the, uh, how we're going to color uh, Windover. And you know what, L let me show it to you. So first thing I want to do is uh, open up Paint 3D. Now, Paint 3D is a great, great bit of software. It comes free on, uh, on any Microsoft um, product so uh, we'll open up a new project in Paint 3D and we're going to insert in an image of the stern of the boat. It's in my current project name on boat and here's the picture. First thing we want to do is crop this image so I lock the aspect ratio so that I still end up with a, an image that is the same uh, dimensions as the one that I had before. So I'll, I'll just crop that down. So I'm still showing the sides of the boat, a little bit of the, uh, a few of the features of the boat, but not the entire thing, but I am showing the entire stern. So I will crop that. Done. Now I can blow that up and get, get a little closer look at it. 
Now what we want to do is paint over top of uh, this. Uh, our new boat will be, our new uh, uh, color will be a dark, dark blue. This is our plan. So I'm going to paint it that dark blue color. And in fact, I'll even go down to the bottom right hand corner and just change the color of blue that they offer to a color that's closer to the one that we're going to be using. So it's a nice dark navy blue. Okay. Now I use the spray bomb, the spray can. Uh, I try to uh, cover the most area I can initially, a nice large circle, and we'll just spray over the back of the boat. Now I'll make that circle a little smaller and kind of pick up some of the details that I've missed. So things like these corners in here, I didn't get really close into them. Oops, I made a mistake. So I go undo and I can redo these areas. Now you might find it easier initially to do this with a mouse because it, uh, it is, does offer you a little bit more control. So there we go. Now the old name has been sufficiently blanked out. It doesn't look it doesn't look like uh, this has been painted. It looks almost as if it's part of the photograph. So now we've got this nice blank canvas to work with. What I do is uh, press on text. Uh, the unfortunate part about uh, Paint 3D is that they offer only fixed sizes for the fonts. The font that we've uh, been using primarily has been a font called uh, Gaglin that's been used throughout our videos. Just uh, for the interest of uh, consistency here, we'll use that as our font. Now, I think we'll start with a highlight color, and usually a highlight will be in a darker color. So you might want to have a highlight in gold. Uh, you see that often. So there's a there's a gold color, uh, or you could also have a highlight in red. I also like to center the, uh, the uh, uh, logo. So let's just try this now. This is at 72 point. I think I'll go a little bit larger, go to 94 point. And there we go. So I'm just going to move this up on the transom a little bit. I'll type a few letters and just see what we've got. So, that is definitely too big for the stern of the boat. So we're going to want to highlight that, and we'll take it down to 72 point. That's much better. Now I want, I want this to sit neatly underneath the ladder, and I want it to be centered. So for now I'm just eyeballing it. I can use things like the stanchions that you can see on either side. There's one here and one here. And those stanchions uh, are, uh, do create sort of an area that you're able to see. So that looks good. Windover. And now we can do, uh, I'll try another font maybe. Trajan Pro 3. So I changed fonts, but you can see it's still too big. So I'm going, to, I'm going to lower it down to 48 points, see how that looks. Oh, perfect. So now I'm going to want to adjust it where it sits. That looks really nice on the stern of the boat. Now this is going to be my drop shadow in gold. Uh, so let's just see how that looks. My bottom paint is red, so maybe let's try the red, see how that looks. Yeah, I like that a little better. This is all personal taste though, folks. So find the center of your word, roughly center it, make sure uh, things like your ladder, like the feet on your ladder are not going to drop down and press against the letter and damage them. So it looks like the feet here will land below the letters, so I won't have any issues there. So I'm going to say, let's save that. Now, we're going to want to write over that, since that is just our drop uh, lettering on top. Uh, let's try a light gray on that. So a, a bright color. Almost white. You don't want anything pure white usually, uh, but almost white, just an off-white. 
uh, kind of to match the color of the deck. So again, I'll use that 48 point. I'll press conventional text and we'll go over top of it. So I'm going to type the word Windover, capital W, and then move that over top of the word that we just put down. Now you have the option of putting it above, putting it below, putting it to the right or putting it to the left. And you can see each one of those create a different look. I particularly like it when I go over to the right. So for now, let's just use that as our... There we go, there's our highlight. So I'm going to save that. So maybe we want to have some decoration underneath there. You can go online and find all sorts of free decoration. Uh, little stars, uh, little images, uh, of some rope perhaps, or uh, just a decorative element. We, Because of the wind over water kind of thing that we're um, trying to get across with this, uh, some kind of an image that has a bit of a wave to it we thought might be nice. And I do have one of those images on file, so let's insert another image here. So I go to insert again, and there's that little image. Now this is in a PNG. The thing about a PNG is that the background is disappears. When you're looking online, you're going to want to find PNGs that provide you the image, but don't force you to bring in a, a background, like a, you know, a square or a rectangle around it. So this is my PNG. It's kind of a wavy wavy thing. If I, if I move it up and down, it will squeeze it. So I want to go make sure I'm on the move button. There we go. I'm going to center it below the word. Now what we're going to want to do now is bring it in from the corner so that it keeps the same essential shape it had. So it keeps essentially the shape it had. I'm not squeezing it or stretching it. I'm going to put that underneath there. That makes for a very nice decorative element, I think. Okay. So we might want to color that so that it matches the color of the uh, writing that we've got now. I won't do the drop image, but I'll just color that. So first, first things first, we'll just locate it. Okay, I like that. So we'll keep it right there. The next thing we want to do is to paint it. So I'll get my brushes and I'll get my little paint tray and I'll grab that red that I used and I'll go I'll expand that a bit and I'll just paint these and paint this. How's that? You know, I think I don't like that so I'm going to change it. So I'm going to go to the gray that we used. I'm going to put change that and change that. Well, let's have a look. I don't think it needs the highlight. So I think that's good. So we're just going to leave that the way it is. Now what I want to do is type in the location. Now that usually would be three inches in height in Canada. Three or four. I'll have to double check that. But there is a legal size that I have to have. And the final product will have that size, but you're going to want to estimate that size so you can get kind of a visual on it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go to my text. And now I'm going to want to make it much smaller than it is now. So let's try it at about 18 or 16. Let's say 16 point. Okay. I'll use the same font again, but this time I'll type it below in quite a bit smaller size. So let's try that. It is centered already, so I want to get to my move. There we go. So move that to the center of here. In the end, it's I know it's going to be longer than it is, so I'll give myself a bit of space here. And I'll start typing. Belleville. Now you can do a little dash in between. Ontario. For some reason it's got the caps lock. Oh, I see it that size. Belleville, Ontario. A little space. And then I put Canada. 
Now that seems a little bit large, so I'm just going to, just to, to scale it properly, I'm just going to highlight that. I'm going to take it down one size and see what that looks like. 16, let's go to 14. That looks much better. So, Belleville, Ontario, Canada. Now I didn't quite center that, so I'm going to want to maybe redo that again. So I just undo. Again, type in, same font, same size. I start here. I'm going to stretch it out, give myself some space. Uh, get it centered on my image. And I'm using the middle of the ladder as my centering point. And now we go Belleville-Ontario-Canada. How does that look? I look at either end and just see where it lands on the name Windover as well. But that looks pretty good. So I'm going to say yes. Now, another thing you want to think about, you don't want the name to be too low down on the transom because as you uh, fly uh, certain sails, the transom will, will uh, sink down. For instance, if you're flying a big spinnaker and you get a lot of uplift, it will drive the transom of the boat down. So in situations like that, you don't want your letters to be underwater. It will be damaging to the vinyl over time. There is a specific kind of marine vinyl that we're going to use, uh, so that it does have certain qualities that will give it more UV resistant. But basically you don't want your vinyl to be underwater and uh, you want it to be in a position that is quite readable. So, so I, I like that. So uh, we're going to save that one. So we uh, open up the menu, we save it as, save it as an image, and we go to that file, uh, which is... So we do have a number of names already that we've done. And you can spend a little bit of time with this. Once you get good at it, it doesn't take very long. You just keep using that image of the stern over and over and over again and save your work as a specific project. So what we've got now are all these different styles that we'd be able to flick through. And you can kind of see them in the context of the boat. Uh, you can see what they look like. Now this is the one that we that got the most positive response uh, when we did a little poll on Facebook. And uh, we're very happy with this. I think we're going to play around with it a little bit more, but essentially this is probably what we're going to end up with. But um, we're going to keep that a surprise until uh, we finally get it on the boat. Want to put a new name on the stern of your boat? That's how it's done. So we recently had a, uh, let me see this is wrong, just a second. Talk to me.